Back at it for another Mike and Mario show. Happy Friday to everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, lots of things to talk about from this past week, as well as things that are coming in the future. But before we do that, Mario, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Mike. And you? Excellent. Excellent. It's Friday. I'm excited, man, as always, to connect and just to look back over this prior week and try to make sense of all the madness. Uh, we have uh, CPI numbers out. We have the great uh, political resignations popping up out of nowhere. We have gold, silver slam down, all that good stuff, man. So typical stuff. But um, before we move forward, how do you want to start off? <laughs> what do you want to touch off with? First of all, you had a nice little trip as well. Yeah, yeah. I had that as well. Yeah. Um, where can we start? I mean, you were talking about the, the banking system. You think it's going to have a tough time? Yeah. The second half of the year. We saw, I think a few days ago, uh, maybe yesterday or I don't remember exactly, but JP Morgan, their earnings were mm -hmm. came out and they weren't very good. Yeah. And also in China, we're seeing, uh, I don't know if you remember, I sent you like a, a link of uh, people protesting outside a bank in China. Yeah. So the situation there is getting worse. Right. And, and it's normal because uh, if the economy is doing badly and we're going to go into a recession, the banks are going to be a, a focal point because we our system is a credit based uh, system where right. uh, the banks are are the engine of credit. Right. A hundred percent. And speaking of which, uh, it, it was on Wednesday, actually. And so I actually touched rants, rants it on a little bit earlier. But uh, J.P. Diamond, I'm sorry, Jamie Diamond. I said J.P. Diamond. <laughs> Jamie Diamond is uh, you know, not only has he mentioned a, a tsunami that's coming. Or hurricane or however he described it but yet he's been very vocal against the same entity i.e the federal reserve that's a shareholder or his company is a shareholder in the actual bank itself but he's been very vocal in a very uh, negative sense and so this just headline here caught my attention earlier how uh, diamond rips fed uh, stress test is terrible way to run the financial system after his bank halts buybacks and so just that little sentence there it come lots of things come from that but because they have to you know, halt their buy buy stock buyback program. He's talking about how that's a financial system and how all this is horrible. And, and anyway, so it has a lot to do with their lack of earnings and of course all the other banks. And then here's another little headline: uh, market down turn a ways on Wells Fargo's profits. So we have two of the bigger banks in our country here, uh, not, uh, probably falling victim to the liquidity crunch that's underway and the lack thereof of uh, stimulus that kept things floating. So. As I mentioned about, you know, the second half of this year, because not only is the European situation very problematic with the banks in different countries, but I think we're going to hear a lot more about the issues from the banking sector. And that's not going to be a good thing because that plays into the whole Fed's pivot or not, because they're going to have to make some tough decisions or the banking section, as well as everything else, stocks and real estate and all, all those other things will be heavily impacted. So uh, but this is just the beginning, I think, in, in a sense. Yeah, and I think uh, the fact that the yield curve is inverting, uh, that hurts banks because they usually uh, borrow uh, short term, mm -hmm. uh, like, and then lend long term. So they're not making a profit there. And I think the fact that we've had the worst uh, stock market uh, and bond market, uh, you know, for the first six months since. Yeah. 1970 uh yeah. banks they they need those assets to keep doing well in order to back up their their lending yeah so that's probably one of the reasons why as well and uh stress tests he, he i agree with jamie diamond on that <laughs> stress tests are useless i think um, yeah it's I comical think, and it's the yeah. fact that at, at, after the great reset or the great recession the banking sector they gave that suggestion to i guess help Prove the liquidity side of things, but it, it's yeah. practical because I, I think the best wow. thing to make banks safe mm -hmm. is to make them uh, a private partnerships. So you can mm -hmm. uh, banks have to, can't become corporations, and right. the people who run the bank they they own the bank, and if the bank goes bust, they lose everything. That's the best way to run a bank. Yeah. And, and the other thing as well, uh, not having a central bank to bail them out 
through the back of the taxpayers. That would make uh, banks very safe. But of course, Jamie Dimon w wouldn't go and he wouldn't want to talk about that because he wants to want you and I and everyone else to keep uh, making him uh, really rich. <laughs> right. And I watched a short clip from I think it was one of the uh, senators uh, talking to, I think, a bank executive about uh, the, an, another coming banking crisis. What will be the response? And he's talked about bailout. And then the guy said that, you know, that's we can't bail out. You guys made it difficult to where there had to be an orderly liquidation of the banking assets, i.e. bail in is what he was probably hinting at. So bailouts are probably off the table. But then bail in, we, we know, of course, is on the table if we get to that point where there's a systemic event. And on top of that, Jamie, Dine, I mean, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo and all the other big banks, because of the systemic nature of those banks, like, you know, not letting them go bankrupt means the entire the daisy chain of events would unfold, which is be the whole entire monetary system. Yeah. So, too big to fail. Yeah, they, they have too big to fail, but yeah, take down the world with them. So, mm. but then again, uh, here is, I uh, just came across a quick little update uh, about the whole protest from China. So it looks like uh, China bank customers to, to get their deposits back after the protest. And so I guess uh, them camping out and expressing, expressing their displeasure and not having access to their funds, according to the source here, they will be getting something back or have access to them. But, you know, just more is more issues dealing with banks and people being able to get what they think is there. So this is a very interesting headline, I think. But anyway, let's keep it moving. So let's touch on briefly. Uh, I want to just show this little graph here. I think this is interesting. So here we have uh, we had midweek, the U.S. Consumer Price Index year over year. And just look at the, <laughs> you know, the CPI. Yeah. Uh, over the last was this five years here. And I went back and just saw how in comparison to yesteryears, 70s and 80s, we still got a lot of room to go, don't you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think uh, the thing is, in the 80s they and 70s, they calculated it uh, differently. Yeah. So this should be more like 20 now. Right. But, uh, where, you yeah. Know, John Williams. Yeah. And I think... Um, we're still hearing from uh, Fed officials. I, I mm -hmm. think it was Bullard. I, uh, I think it was Tavi Costa. He retweeted a comment by Bullard. Mm -hmm. And Bullard said that uh, the Fed today has a lot more credibility than the Volcker Fed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Tavi Costa's comment was, what a clown. <laughs> you know, to say that the Fed now has more credibility than Paul Volcker. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> See, seriously, what a clown. And I agree with Tavi Costa there. Um, and I think the Fed is, uh, they've got no way out unless yeah. they want to really have uh, Sri Lanka to the power of 50 in mm. the US and Western Europe. Because the only way to stop uh, inflationary pressures or mm. stop you know, the money creation or credit creation, which is inflation, is to raise rates above 9%. You yeah. have to raise it at least to... 10 maybe even more yeah uh and, and that's just gonna implode the whole economy uh the u.s government would probably go bankrupt uh well they probably wouldn't but they'd just have to act outright print money without mm -hmm. lending just to pay it off and would have hyperinflate could have hyperinflation or a collapse where all the banks go bust everything goes bust no one has uh any um Government can't pay benefits mm -hmm. anymore, and not, not benefits, but their uh, obligations to, uh, you know, like, the pen, you know, Social Security and Medicare. Yeah. It would be a nightmare. So uh, I don't see the uh, inflation stopping. And in the seventies, uh, I think it was from around the mid seventies to like seventy seven. It did slow down, but mm -hmm. then it just picked up right, right, right again. And back yeah. then, yeah. at least, uh, interest rates were quite quite high no, nominal terms yeah they might have been a little negative but they're not as negative as now and now the uh, wall street and the central bankers they use this inflation expectation they saying, oh in five years time inflation will be at two percent so they tell us that actually the real rate is positive right now which is rubbish <laughs> uh, it's something they never used in the 70s the the real rate right now is uh you know nine percent CPI minus, let's say, About ten years. Ten years around three. Three. So minus six. 
Yeah. The, and then if you use Fed funds, it's 1.5 to 1.7. Yeah. So it's around, uh, well, it's six. Seven, five, seven. eight. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So how can they say that the, the real rate is now positive? It's like a fabrication. It's just trying to keep people playing this game, keeping yeah. the frog in the boiling water. Yeah. And, and even with this uh, little visual aid here uh, representing, you know, this is Fed, the Fed funds and the CPI, you know, even though we know the numbers are bogus, you know, they can't even adjust for just this difference here. Nevertheless, if we were actually given the real CPI numbers, which is in the high teens. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, like, that, literally, they would have to go well beyond that. Yeah, so, uh, interest, did. interest rates would have to be over 20 percent, really, to stop it. Right. Right. And then that right there, as you mentioned, will be extremely problematic. The entire financial system would seize up and game over. And then and, and then we move on. But, yeah, what's amazing to me with all this uh, negative market activity, in a sense, you know, we got retail sales down, CPI continue to go up and all the other things without even talking about gold and silver. For, they, have, they have managed to do their best of, of making sure gold and silver doesn't reflect in the true uh, safe haven, safe haven role that it, it should be uh, showing right now, in the in dollar terms in, in particular. Yeah, so it's it is, amazing. It's, it's yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, frustrating because yeah, in dollars especially. I mean, it has done Just a in fairly, fairly good job in uh, euros and pounds. Yeah, uh, to think that in ninth in twenty eleven, you know, uh, the Fed's balance sheet was below. Mm -hmm you know i don't know where it was two three trillion and now we're at nine yeah and, and gold is still below that 1900 level it yeah. doesn't make sense but if you look back at the gold and silver price chart mm -hmm. from the 70s it was yeah. uh it was frustrating from like 75 to 77 78 mm -hmm. so you you can have period you know they they will manipulate it i think someone tweeted out today that uh, if uh the gold market didn't trade uh, in U.S. hours mm -hmm. <laughs> when gold always goes down, like in the yeah. beginning of the day. A uh, gold, uh, if you struck stripped out that trading for the last 15, mm -hmm. 20 years, gold would be at 5,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, where is that uh, at? Let me. Uh, I, I'm not sure where I saw that. Yep, uh, yeah, I got it right here. Let me exactly. show that. I'll show it here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> gold will be five thousand today if you could just take out the two hours from eight thirty to ten thirty in New York every day. <laughs> We're to refer to how this boy just whoop, oh, yeah, over. And, and you know, I, I uh, noticed that back in already two thousand two. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been happening every almost every day uh, for twenty years. New yeah. York comes in and they they bash gold. And by New York, I, a lot of times it's also uh, around um, eight twenty a.m. Mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. which is fairly early. But that's actually the official open for Comex. Mm -hmm. Comex trades almost twenty four seven. But the let's say Friday, it's the trading day for Friday officially starts mm -hmm. eight twenty. So let's say the Fed comes in, the the banks come in, uh, or the funds. Uh, the official open for gold futures is eight twenty. Even though they can trade before, but that's when uh, a lot of people get a market on open orders, and that's why it happens at that time. And I noticed that because I bought some gold, like some not futures. I bought real coins. Mm -hmm. The first coins I bought were Krugerrands, and then you start looking at the markets and. Uh, and I looked at markets every day because I, I was in the, a broker in, in bonds, but I started falling gold and I, I noticed those things and I could tell, well, this thing is manipulated because mm -hmm. bond markets, uh, they don't always, they don't, there's not a time when the treasuries or the uh, German bond, the uh, German government bond futures, where they always do the same. Mm -hmm. It's more random, but with gold, it was always the same thing. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, I was responding to some comments earlier um, about how people 
because I was so aggressive and just sharing my concerns with the Bitcoin Maximus on Twitter, people were coming at me now like Mike, and they they did tag you in it too. I think exactly. you know about you know Mike, you know gold is not saving me right now. What happened to your silver and your gold? I'm like, man, you look at it from completely the wrong viewpoint. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> I can understand why people are saying that because it yeah. feels like it's not. We got the inflation part right. Everything. I've been calling for that we're going to have uh, rising prices and consumer prices and that gold and silver will protect you. And, and, and I still think they will yeah. in the long term. Uh, right now, uh, yeah, I, I've been proven wrong. But uh, in the long term, I think I'll be proven right. And I yeah. see a lot of people saying, well, the milkshake theory was right. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I think that's early days as well because the U.S. dollar is the best uh, – shirt in a right. dirty uh, in a basket of dirty shirts and eventually the the dollar the only way it can really collapse is against real things right right and that's where like the short-sightedness of people just to say that you know the dollar price of gold and silver is, is not performing the way that they wanted to or expected to based on all the other metrics you know no don't look at it just in usd terms or like there's a hundred and 80 or something other fiat currencies out there and look at the emerging markets like i was looking at just last week and so i'll put it on the screen here just last week in in chile the chilean peso literally just fell off the cliff and this is the chilean peso within the last year and if i was to zoom in to just the last two months the two months in, in gold terms so chilean peso in gold terms if you were a holder of precious metals as a citizen of Chile, rather than just being in solely fiat currency and digits representations of pesos, you would have done tremendously well. But yet your bank account has suffered severely in, rel yeah. in relation to purchasing power. And so this is one country. We got Sri Lanka is a second country. We got, you know, all the so I can go country to country showing you how gold has served its purpose as yeah. a hedge, as a protective tool against fiat currency destruction. So the USD, just be patient. Wait, give it time. And it, you know, God forbid we see, but yeah, just be patient, man. Like, you know, we have the reserve currency of the world, which means that we have the, we have more of a, a longer lifeline than all the yeah, other. Yeah. And uh, the dollar is the base of all the fiat currencies. Correct. Correct. So they're going to disappear first and uh, the dollar will go as well. Right. But um, I think we've got uh, Chris. Yeah, that's uh, Chris. Appreciate you, man. It says, uh, what do you think will ultimately happen that will bring inflation down? What timeline could we be looking at? Thanks. Uh, what do you think will ultimately happen will that will bring down inflation? Uh, the the asset bubble, asset bubbles bursting could uh, definitely hinder the sticker price of a lot of items. Like I was mentioning uh, last week about the whole hyper stagflation. We're going to see. And this is just my opinion. We're going to see uh, a, a, a clear distinction between the real world items we need and the availability or unavailability to get those items and what we be having, to, what we have to pay for them, which might continue to go up. You know, I don't see that actually coming down. But in reference to the other asset classes, you know, there might be a correction there. But I think more so refers to the what, what pricing are you actually to, you know trying to yeah, look at? When it comes to I uh, I have my view of that question. Uh, when will inflation come down? Uh, I don't think it will. Mm -hmm. um, because I look at inflation as the uh, increase of uh, currency and credit. Yeah. And in the fiat currency system, if you stop inflating it, it collapses. Mm -hmm. So there will be a, a time when the inflation ends, but that will be uh, uh, in a hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only way we'll get uh, Almost no inflation and sound money is in the new system. In the current system, I, I don't see inflation ever ending mm -hmm. because it hasn't right. since 1971. Everything is the currency is getting, you know, more and more worthless. So mm -hmm. yeah, and they, if <laughs> if they really try to bring uh, rising prices to zero, they'll destroy the system. Mm -hmm. So there's no way out. So yeah, that's my uh, my view right. on it. But yeah, you could have. Uh, what you're talking about here, uh, correction in the stock and bond market, you could stop the wealth effect. You could have uh, some things go down in price because the Austrians, they say you can inflate the currency system, but you could have prices going up and down. Right. That's the difference. But I don't see them stopping the uh, 
the inflation because um, the system depends on it. It's like, how, how can you, if you stop, if an alcoholic stops drinking, Right. You know, the, it's, severe withdrawals and have it more yeah. issues on top of that. But I think the act the sticker price of the everyday items we need will always go up just because we're going to have a supply issue. Like, you know, at some point, the grocery stores will not have the abundance of uh, selection that it does right now. Therefore, the little bit of items that will be there, well, you'll have to pay more for it. And that type of, you know, consumer price inflation yeah. is going to be. I, I, yeah. All the way I until. Think, um, I think Chris's question is probably because a lot of people still listen to the mainstream mm -hmm. economists and they, they, their view is that just by bringing down the stock market and bonds and real estate, it will cool things down. Mm -hmm. So we, and inflation will disappear. But I, I think that's totally a, a bogus. Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, yeah, we, we might get a bear market in stocks and bonds, but real things that we need, uh, that's going to continue to uh, be very tough. So hyper stagflation. So, and some people are even saying, though, that um, once they pivot the Fed, some people are, uh, there's some uh, analysts out there, technical mm -hmm. analysts, who still see the S&P going to almost 6,000 before the end of the year, but then completely collapsing. So it, it's all a mess anyway. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, there's another question out here from, let me see. I saw it. Uh, Mr. LVP low blood pressure says how you guys following the Indian rupee to dollar, see what happens. Uh, don't toe the line. And so I uh, just popped up something. I, I, I have seen it, but haven't talked about it, but it says India's rupee briefly crossed the 80 mark against the U S dollar. Hmm. And so they are having some serious problems over there. Any rupee has been grappling with multiple macroeconomic crises, uh, consistent, simultaneously uh yet the asians uh worst performing currency yeah i can see that yeah it's the it was like uh let's see beginning of the year uh it was trading around 75 we're now at uh almost 80 i mean it's yeah i mean i i think in the beginning of the year like the first two three months some uh, emerging market currencies are doing really well, like yeah. the real. The real was like, but now emerging market currencies are getting hit. Um, but I think what he means there is because India is aligning itself to the BRICS, mm -hmm. and maybe the Americans don't like that. Could they be? In, who knows? Somehow, somehow, some way impacted. So over the last month, yeah, from 70s. Yeah, so, yeah, but here's the thing. Look at the last two years and see what we got here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Indian rupee has always been a really bad currency, and that's why Indians buy gold. Yeah. It, it, it's not just uh, geopolitically. Now, let's uh, measure the Indian rupee uh, against gold over the last 10 years. So, 2013, 77,000 rupees. As of today, it cost you, what is that, 135 rupees. And, so, and it could, yeah, low blood pressure. It could also be the fact that uh, all fiat currencies, Mm -hmm. are now you know going the way of the right. dodo bird you right. know you look at the japanese yen is done pretty bad as well yeah and, and the japan is an ally of the u.s so maybe it's more the fact that fiat currencies are sinking and as mm -hmm. uh, as we said earlier i think uh you know the the dollar will be the last one to go mm -hmm. here's this, a japanese yeah, yeah, go. Look, yeah it, it you know it looks similar to the rupee chart right and so so it, and so i i frequently go through a type i use gold as a standard to measure the nominal price in fiat currencies and every currency bar even the dollar you know is gone up substantially from about 1100 or so in this time in this two-year time frame up to 1700 which still is improvement in reference to the gold doing what it was supposed to do but and all the other currencies that you just mentioned like it's you know they are already all-time highs every other currency is pretty much all-time high barring some of the G7 nations. And so that's the indication that gold has performed quite well in this environment. Oh, yeah. So just don't look at the USD price. Once again, for those out there. Yeah, people, you know, they get too bogged down in the short term. Right. And the noise. Good uh, you know, if, uh, uh, I mean, if uh, governments were uh, shrinking their size, if politicians were listening to people, uh, if we weren't waging any wars, 
if the Fed was like really raising rates and things were good, then you know gold would probably you have to question uh, whether gold is going to really do well. And by right. doing well, I mean that question whether the fiat currencies were going to do that badly. But I, I fear currency is just a reflection of the, you know, uh, the markets and investors' uh, faith and confidence in the people who are running everything. And I, I right now, uh, I mean, I don't have any faith and confidence in anything. And I can give you an example of, uh, I told you I was in Italy at this symposium, and one of the guys there is an, uh, an elderly guy uh, from the States <laughs> and uh, he worked for the U S government all his life. Mm -hmm. And in one of the uh, lectures, he, he, you could ask questions then. And he said, Oh, I just wanted to add that. Uh, I've been a patriot all my life, but he said, uh, I don't have any confidence in any institution anymore. And this is a guy who worked for the state department. Right. In the U.S. that I met there, so it's not just you and me. It's like people who are actually working for government who who are saying these things. So yeah, very true. Uh, yeah, so I've seen statistics saying trust is an all time low <laughs> uh, in in institu in the government institutions as well as financial institutions mm. as well. So so the only reason that gold is not reflecting that right now is because they can still manipulate it with uh, a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. And I, that's those algorithms and those uh, computer trading is coming yeah. in at 820, as you say. Here's a question for Matthew says, can China, can, I'm assuming meant, can he tell the Chinese yuan and the ruble collapse when the U.S. dollar falls? And so I'm trying to, I don't, I'm, I don't. I, I, uh, I'll, can the Chinese I think, I think the right? Chinese yuan will have a tougher time. But I think the the ruble uh, in the la the Ch Russians in the last few years they've gotten rid of almost their dollar all their dollar reserves. Mm -hmm. They've been buying gold and silver. They have a lot of no. I think the ruble will survive. Uh, it might uh, be uh, affected a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think the U1 will have a tougher time. But eventually they will come come back stronger because I mm -hmm. think they have a lot of gold. Yeah. That yeah. they're not telling us. Right. So did that. So here, and also here's something that uh, gold gold weighted against the ruble over the same ten year stretch is is the one of the only currencies that shows something different in comparison to all the other currencies. And so here we have over the last year with this whole you know get up to two hundred and seventy thousand rubles. Now it's back down to a hundred thousand, and it's dang near as low as it was in 2016, 17 as far as how many uh fiat rubles to get an ounce of gold but what do you think like so the, the ruble has proven to be just as uh uh just as good as gold in a sense for the ruben people ruble uh, for the russian people rather over the last three or four months in, in particular do you think by russia deciding to just mention gold and have their central bank out there willing to transact in gold has led to the strength of the ruble against gold over the last couple of months and, and is this like the framework for what we're going to see come soon with this alternative currency they're talking about, you think? Well, I, I think that spike to 270 was, uh, you know, a bit of a, a, a blip. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's a lot more to do also with the fact that the ruble dropped versus, versus the dollar and then mm -hmm. it, it strengthened again. Yeah. But I think Rafi Farber of the Endgame Investor, mm -hmm. he has said how, that... Um, he looked into it. I, I I haven't looked at it myself, but mm -hmm. since 2006, uh, if you look at uh, gold reserves, mm -hmm. the, how the Russians have increased it, it's pretty much matched the uh, the money supply growth that they've had. So mm -hmm. I, I think they've been trying to run like a de facto gold standard. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the ruble has been a pretty good currency, even though a, a lot of Russians until recently they held a lot of dollars. Yeah, you know, it, it, under the mattress, so to speak. But yeah. now that that's finished. Now I think I think uh, the Russian people they're yeah. behind uh, their you know their uh, leaders more right. than we are uh, behind ours. <laughs> and uh, the fact that uh, you know you, you can't transact in dollars as a Russian is uh, going to accelerate. Mm -hmm. And I think they also uh, made it uh, 
legal now for Russians to buy gold as an mm -hmm. uh, investment. Right. And on top of the currency swaps they have with those agreements with pretty much all the BRIC nations, as well as the soon to be uh, new inductees into the BRICS Plus. Yeah. Which is so also they, they're about to literally uh, change the game completely. And so I just wanted to just show you guys that well before current time frame we're in now, according to the chart here, uh, Russia was, you know, getting their weight up substantially, anticipating yeah. the day where they would definitely need to rely upon this for whatever reason they were <laughs> going to need it. Well, you know, I, I think Russia, they've been, uh, they're kind of like a gold bug. <laughs> mm -hmm. the gold you know, bug they've, been, they've been, yeah, they have, I, I think, uh, because um, they they even know about the gold manipulation, you know, mm -hmm. that the bullion banks, le you know, the central banks lease gold to the bullion banks and they, you know, they turn around and sell uh, like, that let's say they lease a ton to JP Morgan, JP Morgan goes around and sells a hundred tons off yeah. one ton. They leverage everything. And uh, there was the article the other day of uh, Peter Hambro. Did you see he, I mean, I made a video about it. Peter Hambro was a gold dealer in mm -hmm. the LBMA in the seventies. He was talking about that. Uh, we, we only doubt in paper. He said one day, mm -hmm. all these paper claims, when people are going to want the physical, they they won't be there, and right. the Russians know that because one of uh, Putin's um, economic advisor went to the uh, GATA conference back in 2005 in Dawson mm -hmm. City. You know Bill Murphy of GATA, yeah. who, who's trying to expose for over 20 years the price manipulation. He had a a Russian guy there and uh, uh, Advi economic advisor to Putin. So they know what's going on in terms of uh, the manipulation. Maybe they haven't really uh, come out and like exposed it because mm -hmm. it, it's benefited them because they've been able to buy gold uh, right. on the cheap. Right. And, and so and, and it's benefited us as well because we are aware that the manipula manipulation is there. So it buys us more time as well because yeah. when the game is up, the game is up. There's no going back. Yeah. So someone might ask, you know, uh, what if they they never stop manipulating it well they have to uh, because uh if they manipulate it for too long they'll eventually run out of the real thing because they'll keep the price so low they right. can't they can't keep doing it forever just right. like they couldn't in the 60s when it was overt they had the london gold pool mm -hmm. they had to stop that because they're running out of gold yeah and on top of that between now and the time that the system actually, you know, caves in on itself. You know, that's the whole end of the debt Ponzi scheme. Like, you know, that's when the dollar finally goes bye bye. However, you know, yeah, it, it and you, won't, be, you won't, won't once you can't price uh, an ounce of gold because mm -hmm. the dollar becomes worthless. No one's wanna, gonna want to sell it. So, right. it, like, I think who who used the word unobtainium? Yeah, you <laughs> won't be able to get anything. I think it was Michael Maloney or maybe Michael, uh, yeah, Jim yeah. Rickards. Someone and, like that. And I think at that moment, that'll be, it'll be quite obvious that there'll be a new benchmark pricing mechanism, like some, some medium of, of exchange that the world yeah. will recognize will be gold and silver. Right. And that's, that's going to be the best way to reinstate confidence back into yeah. any type of system. Like you won't be able to trust your government whatsoever. And, yeah. <laughs> People always, at, when you say that, well, it will be gold and silver and say, oh, well, how, how are we going to know? what it's worth well people learn very quickly you know you start dealing with a gram of gold or a tenth of an ounce or an ounce yeah. of silver they will know it's uh prices are just uh exchange ratios so they will know that you know they'll take a, a nice uh <laughs> a steak for maybe a half dollar and mm -hmm. uh but it's not going to be fixed of course the what will be fixed is the weight of the money yeah. and the uh, fineness that's what people don't get. Um, I think Milton Friedman, uh, he has a lot to answer for because he said, oh, money should be uh, traded in a free market, in the Forex market. But no, money is a measure of value. Mm -hmm. And you can't change, you can't change the, you know, the weight of the half dollar. Yeah. It has to be fixed. And unfortunately, that's what fiat currency does. It, there's no anchor to, and that's why our, uh, economies our financial system monetary system are so screwed up because we don't have an anchor can you imagine 
if we if um, if you played a, an American you know a football game and the yard changed every second uh you know someone say oh you got your first down and then they come oh no the yard just you didn't get your <laughs> what that then that's what they do with money though right so so since you're talking I, I thought of a visual I put together a while ago to show you uh the properties of, of of money that I put together a while ago and this was geared towards the cryptocurrency community when I first created this but you know, according to divisible, fungible, portable, durable, acceptable, uniform, scarcity, sort of value, anonymity. And so I was highlighting an, an, an anonymity part about how fiat currency, when our you know, credit card system, whatever, they can see those transactions. But, you know, gold and silver in your hands, you know, they, they carry they have a lot more good properties and re relevance to money. Yeah. According to these measurements. Here. Well, you so, know, that portable, I see that you put moderate. Is that like taking it to another country? Or? Right. So that's that. Like you know, you may you may or may not you you can't get far with too much of it, but yet you know. No. It. Yeah, because I I went to Italy this week and uh, I went last Sunday, and uh, I took a few silver coins and uh, I took three little uh, quarter ounce uh, Krugerrands with me, mm -hmm. and I just put it in my pocket with my other change mm -hmm. and that security at the airport. I just put it in the box. And no one knows. They just it, a lot of people don't even know what gold and silver look like. Yeah, of course, yeah. if I'd put like a you know that huge four hundred ounce brick, gold, <laughs> that one, uh, you can put quite a few coins in there. Like you know, the best coin are the sovereigns because they're like a quarter of an ounce. Yeah, you could put like five or six in your pocket, and they won't you know put it in the box to go through the security. Yeah, and they. Yeah. You know, if it's mixed with other coins, they they won't even know. Yeah. So <laughs> it is pretty portable. I didn't spend any. I, I just took. Uh, I just took some. Well, he's not I joking. Though, he's <laughs> no, uh, there are gold bars that are uh, rounded, uh -huh. very soft. Yeah. I have one, uh, and uh, and they were made for that for for right. smuggling. So you swallow it. Let's say I think the Indians did a lot of that. They because they, uh, you know, let's say they go from Dubai back to India, and there's a lot of restrictions. You swallow a gold bar, and then you get to India, and then you know you go to the toilet, <laughs> and it comes out the <laughs> other end. It does, but it has to be a special rounded bar. You don't want the sharp bars because you, you you're gonna hurt yourself. But yeah. people do that. <laughs> I just because I've seen enough articles, right? So I just grabbed the article here. It says travelers caught with gold hid under their to topes uh, in their socks. It says a picture. <laughs> mm. Here's yeah. a picture. Okay, and it's not popping up. But the best, be best thing is to hide it in plain sight, like I did. Just put it in your <laughs> pocket, and uh, they oh, they won't goodness. ask any questions. Right, and that's where. Oh, let me get rid of this. Hold on a second. Let me and you know, if they did stop me and say, "What is that?" I said they're just coins. Yeah, yeah, and that's where you know, jewelry, you know, bracelets, gold bracelets. There's a couple companies that you know actually sell 24 karat gold necklaces, bracelets. Oh, yeah. I mean, all types of things where you can you can you can you know casually you know sneak through. But then again, you got to protect your neck. So <laughs> the other thing as well, let's say there's a revolution. Uh, in in England, for example, mm -hmm. and we have to get out. I could take a, a bar that I have that I could swallow, and it's I think 1.6 ounces, mm -hmm. and we could go to another country, and with that I could start. You know, I could. It, you can't really. It mm -hmm. will help. You know, it will help you get maybe rent a place yeah. for a few months and then get a job because if, if you don't have an address, it's difficult to get a job. So it's more like an insurance as well in yeah. times of trouble. Hmm. Now, so speaking of which, uh, I want to. So, what's? I mean, I had an article here. I want to get your thoughts on what's happening in the UK with the. Um, I think. Uh, sorry, Go Rochelle ahead. Fernandez is saying that the reason why the Indians do that is mm -hmm. because uh, you can't import gold into India, mm -hmm. and, and it's like a contraband <laughs> so you can only import if you're a jewel or a dentist according to her yeah good stuff rochelle uh give us the rundown on the cost of living payments in the uk that's i guess already rolled out or what are you hearing or seeing out there 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not eligible to get many of these uh, payments. Mm -hmm. I think the only one I'll be getting, and everyone will be getting it, even a a billionaire, Mm -hmm. is 400 pounds off your uh, utility bill, gas and electricity. But I think that's only going to be made uh, from October. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, it seems to be everywhere, (laughs) everywhere where uh, in the West, where they call it cost of living. It is a cost of living crisis, but it's also it's happening because of inflation. Right. And then, but th- what they're, they <laughs> these people are so ignorant of economics that they think that you uh, give people more more money, it will help them. Yeah, uh, it, it might seem the right thing to do, but uh, they did that in Weimar Germany and. and um, they printed more money because they mm-hmm. thought it would stop the inflation. Yeah. So they're, they're doing the same thing here in Italy. I think yesterday the reason why Draghi uh, uh, offered his resignation, it was refused, of course, mm-hmm. was that there was a bill to 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 be uh, passed in Cong- uh, in the parliament yesterday. It was another one of these things, you know, twenty six billion euro um, bill to help. Uh, people so, struggling and, yeah. and Italy you know uh, the Italian treasury is having to be bailed out by the ECB and here you have the the Italian treasury the government trying to give billions to the public it, I mean what at one point the countries that have been frugal like Hall, uh, the Netherlands Germany and others mm-hmm. they're gonna say well we don't want this anymore why should we keep bailing out the Italians yeah Ah, yeah. So, but yeah, in the UK, they're doing it here. So uh, that will it will help in the short term, but then in six nine months, we're gonna have even more prices going up, right. and then they're gonna say, "Oh, we need another one." You know, it's right. just a so it's a it's an ongoing spiral spiraling out of control. But yet, it will provide a little slight blip up in consumer spending, which is what they want to try to make it seem as if, oh, the economy's recovering. You know, people are shopping, they're spending, especially yeah. heading into the holiday season this year. Like, I'd imagine here in the U.S., there's going to be talk of some type of in- injection coming soon just because, uh, yeah, Christmas is going to be mighty bleak for a lot of people if they, unless they do. So uh, let's get to some questions. So let's open up the chat and uh, let's get some questions, even though we've got a couple. Feel free to throw out some questions, thoughts, Stephen, ideas. Uh, Stephen Edwards. Where do you see uh, the uh, interest rates going in the EU? Well, there isn't one EU uh, rate. I guess there is a euro, you know, the base rate mm-hmm. by the ECB, which is negative still. Sure. But uh, it, the the thing about the EU, euros, it's the eurozone actually, because there are countries in the EU who are not in the euro, like Sweden or Denmark. Sure. But the euro rate, um, it's still negative, the ECB base rate uh, but then you have different countries uh, you don't have a euro treasury so it's not like the u.s so uh italian 10-year yields they got up above four uh, percent a month ago but the german uh yield is like one one percent so it depends uh, I, what i see happening is countries like portugal italy ireland greece and spain the mm-hmm. periphery their yields are going to go up a lot more than the german for example <laughs> so just I'm just looking at typing in global interest rates, and so this boy is just, they, just, they just have it at zero, <laughs> and it's actually negative. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was negative. Yeah, yeah so they just got that, it zero maybe here. that's a re- reference rate. Oh, this, is, that's just, this is actually old. This is outdated. Yeah, yeah. It's got 2016. So uh, that's funny. Let's but, see, let me have a look where it is exactly. CB base rate. Uh, let me see. I found something. Uh, what uh, is it? Minus minus zero point five. So it's minus half a percent. Yeah, and uh, so I've noticed over the last uh, couple of weeks, rather, uh, Canada had a little hike, Chile, and so we got all, all these nations. Just this week, we had four: mm. South Korea, Canada, Chile, and New Zealand. They all half a point, three quarters of a point. It's a whole point in Canada and half a point in uh, South Korea. So, mm. yeah. Uh, Dart, Dart Vader is asking, how how come the BIS and central banks 
can manipulate the 10 year yield while they drip through QE, uh, Darth Vader. That's what QE is all about. They do it also by um, forward guidance. Forward guidance is telling the market that you're going to do something. So yeah. you keep speculators at bay. Uh, the Bank of Japan, uh, they, they got something called the yield curve control, where they say uh, we're going to defend this certain level, 0.25%. And uh, they'll say, you know, if the rate starts going above that, we will uh, buy yeah. an unlimited amount of JGBs. And how do they buy that? Well, they just create reserves out of thin air, which is what QE is. Yeah. Here's a uh, Roger Rose says, what does the silver chart say? Buy or wait? <laughs> and so can't give financial well, advice. Yeah. <laughs> you go ahead. I, you... But we can't give financial advice. But uh, once again, in reference to silver, the paper price, which is 1850 ish right now, is a lot different than when you have to go to the store. So the premiums will make up the difference. So yeah. when you have much of a discount, unless you know somebody and got the actual connection, it's, it's always a good time to uh, redeem fiat for real yeah. money, in my opinion. So I mean, I've I've been through this when I started buying gold and silver twenty years ago. I used to think always about the price, and mm -hmm. and I still do a bit. But um, most people still think, oh, uh, they get into gold and silver to make fiat dollars, right? So uh, unless uh, you're a trader, you know, it's very difficult to say where the market's going to go in the short term. And I advise if you're going to trade to do it as a, a full time job, right. but when the system is on its last legs, um, I don't think that's something you should be worrying about that your insurance uh, the, is moving around. Right. You know, I, I think um, there's a guy, um, I think it's ba 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 Balan GP. He's got a good U YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. He looked at the uh, price of gold in Venezuelan uh, Bolivars. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah back in 2017 2018 just start before the hyperinflation yeah. and he was saying oh it got up to 12,000 then dropped to 8 and then back to 10 and then it dropped again and he said can you imagine people trading and saying oh it went to 10,000 it failed to go above 12,000 so I'm going to get rid of my gold <laughs> and then uh, a, a year later it was trading in the millions yeah watch this so just to show you <laughs> it's off the charts so real quick this is i type in go to venezuelan boulevard and it's off the charts but you see the you can't even see where it traded uh, exactly you, so you is can't that see what's what gonna happen go to the dollar and the other currency who knows it's every anything's possible oh my venezuela, God. venezuela was one of the richest countries in the world in the 50s and 60s right and now it's a basket case and we're going we're becoming basket cases we don't so, trust our leaders anymore. And so just think about this. So in 2008 ish, you know, it was 62,000 bolivars for an ounce of gold. A and as kilo, of right no, now, as a kilo. Oh, go, no, no, go on the side. So this is a kilo on this side. What is that? Yeah, yeah. No, it says kilo. So, yeah. so ounces on this side, dollars. Yeah. No. It's in kilos that it's not in ounces. Yeah, what yeah, I'm trying to say, yeah. you have to divide that by uh, 32. So that's the price in kilos. Okay, but so on the other side, lot. on the other side, it gives dollars as well. So as of right now, so it's 11 trillion, 11 trillion kilos, it, it, 11 it, trillion it, bolivars for a kilo, 364 billion. Billion. No, that's. No, we got some decimal places there. We got millions, billions, trillions. So go back to uh, 2017, 2018, because I think it was around 12, 8,000. Yeah, you oh, see? Yeah. It was around 13,000. And I think the like the 12,000 level per ounce was a really key level. Mm -hmm. But and then, you know, let's say you were trying to like trade the go. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, can people who are trying, trying to trade uh gold for bolivar back and forth they got you know if they got rid of their gold before it started moving mm -hmm. they would have lost everything yeah clearly and uh let me see so here's uh so here's the turning point like it's, this is yeah. march 2021 it shot up to over 800 
True. Uh, I, no, I think, uh, Mike, I think the turning yeah. point was earlier. It was uh, it's earlier, but for this, so this is a newer currency, though. This is the I know, but 27, but 2017, 2018, it was pretty bad, too. Yeah. So it's gotten even worse. If you if go back five years, yeah. Can so, yeah, so this is when it was, it, and this this was bad in the sober. Oh, no, yeah. So now they got the Soberano. It's the yeah. Soberano now, and this is the Forte. So it's, it had been oh, three yeah. different. It's a mess. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, you didn't want to be in Bolivar's anyway ago. No, you had a choice. So and I think that's what I'm trying to say. We should not be trying. If you're trying to trade gold for fiat dollars or any fiat things, yeah, do it, but be careful. Uh, yeah. maybe do it as a separate thing and keep your physical gold and silver and trade fiat for fiat. Yeah, you know, trade the paper gold. Don't. But yeah. don't don't trade your physical back and forth. Right. You don't get... tamper with your insurance policy. Yeah. Add to that in ink small increments, mm. but then you got your slush fund, your play money, your speculation funds. Sure. Um, all right, man. We about 50 minutes, man. We can go forever. But uh everybody appreciate you for joining us. Uh Medical 64 on YouTube, rethinking a dollar wherever you can find me. Uh it's always good to connect and just uh you know talk and bounce ideas off each other and have a good way to end uh, uh the work week. So anyway, be blessed, be safe. Uh any last thoughts, Mario, to leave want to leave us with? Um, I, was, I was like putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I just think uh, we need to keep uh, an eye out now for the Fed and what comments pe they're, you know, the Fed officials are making. I think they're starting to get concerned, yeah. and I think they could be pivoting soon. I, mm -hmm. I think they will raise rates, of course. The twenty, I think, is the twenty seventh. Yeah, of July twenty sixth, twenty seventh is yeah. the meeting. But uh, yeah, we're having, I think they've tried to uh, get people to uh, back down a little bit because mm -hmm. everyone was saying after the CPI, oh, they're going to raise by 1%. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's one of the reasons why the stock market is rebounding because okay. I think it, it sniffs, you know, something out there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I guess one thing is that don't really believe anything the Fed says because right. they, they, they're not in control. Right. They, they, I think they, yeah, other than just being the focal point of the mainstream media, as well as what we've been conditioned to think that they have all this power to control and contain, it's already too late, I think. And that's why all the activity at all East with the alternative currency is going to probably be announced. If the Fed pivots the way that people are anticipating them do, markets respond favorably or unfavorably, there's going to be a, also a, some type of Eastern announcement on our alternative. So it just seems very mm -hmm. timely that that will be the actual event that makes a true shock to the world head into the uh, midterms but all right people uh be blessed be safe enjoy your weekend stay out of trouble and get your get your weight up get your prayer game up and you know get as much out of this old system as it's collapsing as you can while you can so anyway be blessed be safe see you later peace